The Trader's Edge with your host, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, all you wonderful money masters and treasure hunters out there. Good morning. It is a terrific Tuesday. Hope you're off to a great start of your day. If you're not, you absolutely should be. You know, folks, I absolutely love being here with you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much for listening on the radio. If you're listening in the Spokane area or up in New Hampshire, we really do appreciate it. You can also catch this show live on Tiger TV. You can just simply go to the homepage at TFN.com. You click on the uh, uh, Tiger TV button, or you can go a little bit further over to your right, and you can bookmark this application on your iPhone, your Android device, your iPad, whatever it is. And then you're just one click of a button, and boom, you can pick up any of the shows. I kick things off. I'm Steve Rhodes. Kick things off for us at 9 a.m. each and every day. I love doing it, folks. And if you take a quick tour around the uh, world, let's just take a look at the uh, futures markets. They're off everywhere. Today's going to be a red day. We've been expecting this, you know, and we'll show you why. We'll show you the patterns that are out there right now. You've got the Dow futures off 120. You've got the ES mini down about 14 points. That's trading out at 1350 right now. NASDAQ down 24 points at the 2591 level. The uh, Russell 2000 futures off 10, almost 11 points at 794. King dollar. King dollar up 45 ticks. Gold trading down 25 bucks at 1678. 877927-66648. And you know tonight, folks, is the uh, is the final stop on our Go Long America tour. And uh, so here in Tampa, if you haven't signed up for it and you really want to be able to find another gear, find a new standard, take your life to another level, then join Tom and I tonight. That's from 6.30 to 9.30. We're over at the uh, Grand Hyatt in Tampa. And, you know, if you're anywhere near the area, it'd be worth a couple-hour drive back and forth, if you will, because I promise you one thing. We're going to teach you some pretty cool stuff. In, in three hours, uh, you know, the amount of information that we're going to be able to share with you, throw at you, that you're going to be able to take away from there is, I, I don't know, that uh, other than attending the Master Trader course, I don't know where you're going to get that type of information, that type of consolidated period of time. And so go ahead, you know, you can sign up for it. Go to the homepage at tfnn.com. You will not be sorry. You'll be happy that you made that kind of investment in yourself. And, you know, one of the themes, if you will, that I talked about uh, over the course of the last week or so, on the radio show, uh, as well as during the uh, w uh, during the workshop that Tom and I do, is just simply, folks, you know, there are no failures in life. And it, and it comes more true. It's hard to do it really in a talk show when we're going back and forth between the markets and maybe the way that you need to, well, not maybe, I know it's the way that you need to approach it approach not just these markets, but how it is that you have to approach life. And a small little word, small little words will anchor positive or negative uh, thoughts and your outlook on life. Folks, there are no failures. When we trade these markets, there's no failures. There's only outcomes. And those outcomes, we can identify exactly where they're likely to go to, what it is that you should be looking for, where the roadblocks are out there. Folks, as long as you are learning something, you are succeeding. I mean, let me put it to you. Let me give you a, a question, if you will, or put it in a different perspective. Do you think that the, you know, the older that you become, or maybe the wiser that you become, or how about the more educated that you come, that your failure quota, okay, the failure quota that you have in life, do you think that that means that you're going to make fewer mistakes in life? You know, the older that you come, the more educated that you become, the wiser that you come. And, and if you can't apply it to yourself, think back to some of the masters, if you will, some of the professionals that you admire, that you watch. Maybe it's an athlete if you will. Maybe you've got, you know, you can picture who your favorite athlete is, whether it's a golfer, a baseball player, a football player, you know, tennis player, whatever it is, you know, think about it. Just think about that one person that you can say right now, that's somebody that you admire because of the level of play that they're at. Doesn't Whether it's a trading game, whatever it is. So do you think that the wiser, the older, the more educated, the, but you know, that the, the stronger that they've become, do you think, folks, that their failure rate goes down? Because what I will tell you, what I will guarantee you in studying masters for the last quarter of a century is it doesn't go down. It absolutely doesn't go down. What happens when you become a master? That means when you go from being a dabbler to a stressor to a master and you do it at all phases of life, whether it's sports that you're playing, you know, sports, you might say, hey, I want to go play tennis or I want to go play golf or I want to go bowling. You know, you watch it on you watch it on television. It looks so easy. Maybe you want to go out and shoot some hoops or what have you, you know, and what happens is, folks, is that actually. You know, and, and so you go, you see dabble in it, if you will. And and what's going to happen, as soon as you hit the wall, you know, some of the music that was playing out there might have been from the, uh, 
might have been from the Pink Floyd, the uh, wall uh, album out there. I'm pretty sure that it was. And so when you hit the wall, folks, what happens, a dabbler's going to give up right away. Absolutely. And you've done it in life. Maybe it's even just a diet. You say, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go on a diet and you hit that first wall, if you will. That first wall could be a Three Musketeers bar or a Twix bar or something like that. Or maybe it's just a donut. You hit that wall. And what's a dabbler going to do? Going to give up right there at that moment. A stressor, though, is going to say, nah, I know I can make it through there. And is going to stress about it, if you will. And is finally going to, uh, you know, get through that first brick wall, if you will. But then it's going to get to that next brick wall. And eventually, it's going to hit a couple of walls. And the stressor is just simply going to give up because they're using so much energy. Masters expect failures. And they know that they're only outcomes. And if you take a look at any professional baseball player, tennis player, what have you, yes, you don't want to make errors. You don't want to make mistakes. But what the reason that you're a master is you expect them. You know that they're going to happen. And what you will do, folks, is you will correct them sooner. If you're a trader and you know you should be using stops and you're not using stops or you've had profits because you've been long the market, if you will, and you didn't go ahead and raise your stops because you believed that it would go up forever, or if you were short and you believe things will go down forever, the whole point is if you're not using stops, folks, you know, I promise you the area that you're living at is the dabble level or the stressor level. In fact, right now, you might be stressing, if you will, with the futures being off like that because you're wondering what the heck is going to happen. I'm going to show you. I'm going to tell you, and it's all been expected, if you will, and I want you to be able to live that life of mastery, but what I want you to understand, folks, is that the whole key, the whole switchover, and why you should attend tonight or, or any of the Master Trader series, whatever it is, folks, is because you want to be able, what I've learned, you know, and I wish I had learned this at an even younger age, that what you want to do is you want to immerse yourself in something. You want to become a master of whatever it is that you do. It is so much more enjoyable. You want to also be able to learn how to juggle the five or six balls, if you will, that you have in life, whether it's health, it's wealth. Uh, you know, uh, folks, relationships, you know, those are just the three primary ones. Work, there's another ball that you've got to juggle. But what I want you to understand, folks, I want you to understand is that what you really want to do when you take a look at those folks that you really admire in life, they're masters because they know that when there is a failure that comes and when there's a mistake that they make, they correct it just like that. So if you are in a area, and it's a trading area, what have you, you know, correct those mistakes or let us help you be able to identify those areas and let us help you to be able to make money, folks. So that's what it's all about because masters, they learn quicker from their mistakes than all those dabblers and all those stressors that are out there. So let's go take a look at the markets. Let's go see what it is that we've been looking at, you know, and if you've been listening to this show or even some of the other shows uh, that we do, you know, we start our programming at nine, runs all the way to six. Today's a great lineup. You've got the Money Masters show following this, and we go to Kate Stalter in Santa Fe, great the small cap roundup. Then we go to Victor Jones. I think Victor might be up in Chicago today. That's the option hour, one hour uninterrupted uh, show. Then we've got Ken Shreve from 3 to 4, the Tom O'Brien show from 4 to 6, and then 6.30 to 9.30 night. Tom and I at the uh, Tampa Bay Hyatt doing the Go Long America Tour. Come out and join us. So we're taking a look here at the ES Mini on the uh, chart here. What I'm going to first do, though, is I'm going to switch over to the actual index, okay, the cash index on the S&P. And what I've been showing, folks, you know, what seems like for the longest period of time, inside these two red this is this red ascending wedge. And as you've been, you can go back and you can listen to the archive because I probably talked about it for the last couple of weeks. I've been talking about it for so long. I got tired of talking about it. But that's where you just simply have to have persistence, folks, because you know that the patterns out there, that they predominantly are going to end a certain way. And you can go take a look at most of your ascending wedges out there and know that they resolve themselves to the downside. And if you just simply look at that, that's the two red lines that I've got. No, I've got several red lines out here. But the ascending wedge that I'm looking at, starting from the uh, October, October, the December uh, 5th swing point. That's the high out there on the S&P cash. You're looking at 1266.73. And this red line ascending, if you will, all the way up here. Uh, and it created a wedge simply just by coming down to the December 19th uh, area, starting at the low of that swing point. And really, you could drop right off of the next swing point there, or the next candle, if you will, on December 20th. Or you could have done it right off of the January 30th area. But what you can see is that price was traveling inside this wedge. It got narrower and narrower, tried to bust out, you know, on, actually first tried to bust out on the uh, uh, 1st of March. 
uh, I, I, I'm sorry, on 29th, the 29th of February, David White's birthday, if you will, one of the lucky few to have a birthday on the 29th of February leap year. And then the following trading session, March 1st, closes back inside there, but you can see, you know, really testing the low part. And then yesterday, uh, you know, what it did was it actually finally broke out of there, yesterday being March 5th. And what it did, folks, is that it was getting down. When we take a look at the S&P cash, you got to go all the way back over into the May 2nd swing point. The May 2nd swing point, the low there of 13, uh, it was 1358.59. What did you get down to yesterday? You didn't quite get down there. You got down to 1359.13. So close, but yet so far away when you are coming down to a swing point low or a swing point high and you stop just before it. Oftentimes what you're doing is you're just building up the energy in order to take on that hurdle race. And that certainly is a hurdle, folks, because you have to overcome that area. And certainly today we are going to see that hurdle get jumped. Uh, in the S&P. Now, where is it going down to? Well, you know, there's a couple of uh, ascending lines that we've had. First of all, I think the most important one is going to take a look at October 4th, the low that we had out there. That is this blue line going right up here, which is intersecting with this descending tops, which goes all the way back to the highs in 2007. That is likely the target area where we're taking a look at. That's in the 1320s range. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. X Story Gold Mines, an NYSE Amex listed company trading under the symbol XG, is slated to be the newest gold silver producer in Argentina. X Story is forecast to produce more than 250 million in bullion annually, beginning in 2013, at a cash cost of less than $200 for each ounce of gold produced. That forecast will make X-Story one of the highest margin operators in South America and a sector leader in the mining industry. X-Story has 50 million in its treasury, having spent over 60 million to date on drilling and engineering. The ultimate size of its Argentina discovery could be determined by year end as results from the six drills operating at the site are fully assessed. To find out more about X-Story Gold Mines and their exciting growth potential, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex under the symbol XG. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of investment newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume in the major stock indices tell him when to be in the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakouts gains. Go to TFNN.com today, click Investment Newsletters, and get Ken Shree's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN.com, author of Mastering Probabilities, a daily investment and trading newsletter, and teacher of The Money Game. Studies show that three out of five people are afraid for their life in trading these markets, and the number one reason given is fear of loss. Look, fear stands for false evidence appearing real, and The Money Game proves it. Lesson number one, don't risk more than 1% of your trading capital on any trade. Why, you ask? Because 35 trades in a row where you risk 50 cents and make a dollar are all you need to double your trading capital versus the 230 losing trades in a row you would need to bring your balance to $100. Let me teach you more about the money game risk-free for 30 days. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, for your 30-day risk-free trial. You are born to be a money master, and I'll teach you how. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the technical corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll 
you'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Here's what people are saying about Tiger TV. Let's go to John in Tampa. Hey, John, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. You having a good day out there? A wonderful day. I love your Tiger TV. I watch it every day. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Oh, man, I appreciate you out there watching it. How long have you been watching the Tiger TV? I watch it almost a month now, and it's just wonderful. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, yes, yeah, it's cool. You see the charts and everything. Thanks so much for the hard work. Tiger TV, a great news service from TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Mm, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, we'll look at them stars when we're together. Well, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, it's always better when we're together. Welcome back, folks. 877-927-6648. Thanks so much for uh, joining me. You got the uh, Dow Futures off about 150 points right now. Let's go to the ES Mini. That's trading out at 1348.75. So we take a look at the ES Mini, uh, folks. Now, so we had the, uh, you know, we had the S&P cash give us uh, an indication as it broke to the downside out of the ascending wedge. We knew that that would resolve itself to the downside. Uh, and, well, we knew that the, the, the probability was up there. Uh, there were some other things that my, that I include inside my newsletter service so that my clients know the divergence that's actually out there uh, and what it was that was also telling us that we would resolve this uh, ascending wedge to the downside. Now when you start taking a look at, well, where is it going to go? This is where you want to start taking a look at, you know, expansions. This is where you want to truly understand Fibonacci expansion numbers, the 1.272, the 1.618. Uh, if you just simply come back, what you want to do is you want to go take a look at a series of swing points. And the swing point, folks, is nothing more than when you see a definite change in trend in the marketplace. So when we take a look at the ES Mini, if you will, that, chen, that train, the train, oh, no, I'll get it out, right? The change in trend from the top, if you will, were the highs that were made out right around the 7.30 in the evening that time period on March the 1st when it got up into that 13.76 seven area, uh, 13, I think it, thought it got up just a tad above that. It looks like 1377 even. So now we can see that the market, if you will, you know, turned down from there. The next uh, swing point that you come to of any major significance, if you will, this is a 30 minute chart that we're looking at. So it's going to be a little different when you're looking at a daily chart versus a 60 minute versus a 30. But just to keep things consistent with what we're taking a look at, what we're looking at here is the change trend and the way up came at about 4.15 in the afternoon on February 29th. David White's birthday, you got to love that. Now, when you take a look and you take your measuring tool, if you will, your expansion tool, you go from the low of that swing point all the way up to the high that was made at that 1377 level, what you would get is at that 1.272 area, 1351. 1351.24 is the exact number. We're not about being exact. We are about being outstanding, folks, because when you are outstanding, that's where all the extraordinary rewards are. Exactness or perfection there is no place for it in life. Get rid of it. You can't live up to it. There is the worst standard you could possibly try to attain is perfection. Well, 1351, where did the S&P move down to? Move down to 1351.75 was the low that was put in at about 6 o'clock this morning. And then it just simply hovered sideways for a bit, picking up some steam. As you can see right now, it's at the lows of its session out at the 1348.50. So you break through that. Then where do you go to? Well, then you start taking a look at that 1.618 level 1.618 folks 1344 you're only at 1348 right now so that seems very easy now what you can also see is you're underneath there is no other swing point that you have here folks until you get down into this area this area being around the lows of february the 15th so february 15th you're looking at the 1335 area again this is on the 30 minute chart so if we just simply take our contraction 
uh, tool. That's the same tool that we use to figure out either expansions or contractions. We'll go, go down to the bottom on the 30-minute chart into that 1336-ish area, all the way up to the highs that were put in at uh, 13, uh, 1377. And what you will see is the 0.618. We have busted through that this morning. That was where you had that 1.272. Why is that important? Because when you have multiple Fibonacci sum, uh, summation numbers coming together at the same point in time, that should act as strong either support or resistance. In this case here, strong resistance, right? So now when you break through that, and that's because that was a 0.618 retracement and a 1.272 expansion off that last swing point, and then you want to take a look at, well, how is it that you're coming through that area? Well, folks, looks to me like you're starting to come through there with a wide-ranging bar. Now, you've got another two minutes left in this trading session here, but you're slicing through it like some warm butter, if you will. Nothing wrong with warm butter, unless you're trying to lose some weight, then that's probably not recommended. Well, warm butter, folks, what this is saying, it is headed down to 1343. We will see that uh, this morning. And now, if you break through that area, folks, what, and where it's really likely going is really this next swing point where you've got a congestion, if you will, of swing points down in that 1333 level. You're trading out at 1349, you know, so that would be quite a movement to the uh, downside, if you will. And that is on the ES Mini. And folks, if you'd like to learn more about this, if you you want to be able to take your life from a dabbler to from a stressor to a master then go over to the homepage of tfnn.com right now sign up for my master trader series class take advantage of the tiger dollar promotion that we've got out there so you can save 30 percent because you know if you're playing this game whether you're a trader you know this is all really about money management let me share with you secrets so that you can plan your roadmap so that you can make all kinds of money you know folks and so go over to the homepage, check that out and it's going to be two full days, whether it's going to be in Boston, Denver, or here in Tampa. It's going to be a Friday or Saturday. And if you've ever been to one of my uh, workshops, folks, wait till you get to a master trader course. We'll be right back. 877-927-6648. Well, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, it's always better when we're together. In the world of financial markets, there's a new player in town with an exciting new way to trade the markets. Nadex now offers binary options as well as bull spreads in a wide range of indices along with commodity and forex markets. With as little as $100, you can gain access to a new way to trade global financial markets while guaranteeing that your risk will always be capped. Nadex allows you to multiply your trading opportunities in ways never imagined before and access markets you want once thought were out of reach. With short-term trading opportunities available, including binary options expiring each hour the market is open, Nadex allows you to take advantage of a variety of market conditions regardless of volatility or market direction. Now is the time to take advantage of this exciting new market. Don't let this trading opportunity pass you by. Open your account today by clicking on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Nadex, a better way to trade. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. If you want to get great trade setups in equity as well as the option market, come over to TFNN.com and test drive my daily newsletter, Market Insights, for two weeks absolutely free. Each trade setup comes with a profit projection as well as stock placement. Included in Market Insights is a Twitter alert service. This allows you to take advantage of intraday setups. Volatility is back in the markets. What does that mean to you? To me, it spells short-term opportunity each and every day. The days of trending up on light of volume are gone. We have come off the highs with volume across the globe. Don't get caught in a complacency trap. Many of the indices have given back two months of trading in one week. We have a trader's market. You can take advantage of this trader's market by test driving my daily newsletter, Market Insights, free for two weeks. Market Insights will give you the edge you're looking for in the markets. Go to TFNN.com under Newsletter. Hit the Market Insight tab for your two-week free test drive right here, right now. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become 
become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation location and the Morgan Stanley Smith Barney financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and certified financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC, member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Mm, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, we'll look at them stars when we're together. Well, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, it's always better when we're together. to the races. You've got the uh, Dow down about 140 points right now. S&P's off 14. Uh, composite down 20. Small caps down 9. Everything down a percentage point or so. Apple leading the charge on the way down off 12 points right now. Trading out at 520. And if a uh, quick uh, tour around the uh, world, I didn't get to that during the uh, opening. You've got the DAX trading off 164 points, folks. That is uh, uh, sending out a, a signal. That's not just a, a bullet across the bow. That is a cannon across the ball out there. You've got the FTSE off 86 points uh, across Asia. They were down last night. How do you like this number? Hang Seng down 459 points. Uh, the Shanghai off 35, and the Nikkei down uh, 60 points. Let's go to our first caller. Let's go to Lou in New Hampshire. Lou, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Yes, sir. How are you today? Okay, how are you? I'm doing excellent. Thanks for asking. You wanted to look at the SMN, which is the uh, pro shares uh, for the uh, basic materials. That is the inverse uh, pro shares. Uh, tell me what you're doing, how I can be of help to you. I'm not in yet. You're not in yet, Okay. And uh, so you're looking looking to get in, or you're looking to be able to, yeah. So, you know, you're, the first signal, Lou, that you had out there, and I'm just simply going to go over to the XLB, that is the pro shares, uh, you know, which is, I think, where the best place for you to be able to trade off of this, all right? And when you take a look at the pro shares, the first signal that it gave you, just so I can help you, uh, you know, if you've been watching this, if you've been taking a look at it, is the bearish engulfing that took place on February 29th. And, you know, folks, a bearish engulfing only going to take place as the market is moving up, just like a bullish engulfing only takes place as the market is moving down. And I'll be teaching uh, folks at my Master Trader Series course how to actually use those candles, how to be able to trade those. In this case here, this uh, bearish engulfing candle, you know, which was happening at the highs, lose on the uh, 29th, not only did this engulf the prior session, and just like gold had engulfed an entire month, you know, which was, which was saying to us, you know, loud and clear that lower prices were coming in gold. In this case here, it engulfed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, an entire week, really more than a week, if you will, because there's only five trading days in a week. And so when it engulf, when you have a, uh, an engulfing candle that engulfs more than one session, folks, that is a, a signal to say, I mean, if you're long, you know, tighten up your stops big time. But what it also does, is, uh, Lou, it gives you the opportunity to start taking a look at going ahead and getting into that trade right now. Maybe not taking the full position because oftentimes you're looking for, you know, a test of that area or maybe some intraday pattern on the XLB that would get you into it. And so if you're going to take a look at an intraday pattern that might have gotten you into that trade, I would just simply come down, come down, come down, come down to the 30 minute area. So on the 30 minute area, you know, you had an ABC pattern. 
if you will, let, well, let's see here. Let me uh, refresh this screen. Let's uh, refresh this because uh, I'm on a different uh, trading system. So if we take a look at the bullish engulfing candle that took place on the 29th, what I'll just simply do is just take a look at a retracement. So I'm going to go from the high on the 29th at 10 in the morning all the way down to the uh, low that was put in on, at 4 in the afternoon on the 29th. So, you know, we talk about, you know, if you're going to visit us, Lou, here down in Clearwater, you're going to come up to Suite 618. Well, that's because we take a look at that 618 retracement area. That's such an important level to know. And that would have been your area, your target to first get in or decide to go short uh, the uh, XLB, or in this case here, long the SMN. And that's when it came in and it hit at 37.46. And it did that coming in on March the 1st and did that around 1.30 in the afternoon. And that was really your signal in order to be able to take the trade. You know, what I don't like to do necessarily is chase a trade. I don't mind adding to a winning position, but in this case here, trying to chase this on the way down, I would be more looking for a retracement uh, back. And that's, you know, so if we take a look at the, at, that's on the XLB. Let's go switch over now to the SMN, and let's go ahead and pull that up on the uh, chart here, and let's take a look at where this could be uh, headed to. So the SMN gaps up uh, this morning, 1621, uh, you know, and in this case here, what you're going to see is you had the uh, bullish engulfing candle that took place on the 29th as well. And so, you know, at this stage here, I don't recommend that you, uh, that you chase this. Uh, where this is likely headed, uh, it, and it's going to really depend on what happens inside the queues. And the queues, and we're really talking about Apple right here, uh, that's going to give us an idea for how long this correction is going to last. Now, we do have a full moon coming in on Thursday. So at the end of Thursday, the work to the downside could be done here, where the SMN looks like it wants to try to get up into is the uh, December 19th area, the low there of around 1963. You're trading out at 1621. And I just don't know that the reward to risk is here for you to jump in on this trade. What I would rather that you do is I'd rather you take a look at trades that you're looking to be able to get into and help you to identify some candle patterns or some retracement patterns, or maybe it's a butterfly or Gartley pattern that would allow you to get in on the trade, you know, and using that as a leading indicator versus trying to chase after something. Does that, does that help, you know, with regard to at least my thought process? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. so you know what I, you know, and, and if, but if that doesn't work for you, and you're looking for a place to get in, then what you've got to just simply do, in my opinion, is just simply come down to a shorter term chart. You know, whether that's a 15 minute, a 30 minute, and if you see a pullback on lighter volume, then you can go ahead and you can fire away as well. It's just not the trading style that I use, uh, you know, in order to be able to uh, enter trades. Gotcha. Okay, and that's primarily right now because I don't know that uh, this correction is going to be uh, long lasting, uh, you know, and we really won't. And, and part of where I'm coming from that is we haven't had the volume to the downside. So we'll see today, and there's no way to know this a few minutes into trading, whether or not we're going to have volume today. We're only 10 minutes into the trading session. All righty? Very good. Thank you, Steve. You bet. Hey, thanks so much, Lou, for calling 877-927-6648. And uh, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, let's go to the currency uh, marketplace here. We take a look at the currency marketplace. You know, we're talking about King Dollar. And in King Dollar, folks, we're talking about that being up 46 uh, ticks right now. And what's that all about? Well, that's all about the queen, if you will. And on the queen there, folks, what we're taking a look at is the, is the queen euro. And we take a look at the euro, just simply taking a look at the uh, retracement that the uh, euro has done off of the last leg up. Now, the last leg up that I'm talking about is going to the February 17th low. The low that was made out there was 1.311. Uh, that, well, I'm sorry, that's not the low. Let me get the right low. The low that was made out there was 1.29733. Uh, you see how masters make corrections right away? As it was rolling off my tongue, I knew the low was a 131. So it was 129, if you will. And the low that was put in there, the high that we have was put in on February 24th. So from the swing low to the swing high, what you can see is that yesterday's action came down to the 0.618 area. If you can't see it, that's when we take a look at uh, my charts here, and I'm drawing using the retrace tool or the expansion tool, the retracements that we're looking at, you'll see the first line is always going to be 0.382 on my system, the second line being 0.618, the third 0.786. So what it does yesterday, which makes a lot of sense, right, you're going to get up to that 0.618 elevator, escalator, and you're going to go ahead and get off, 
you know, it got off and then this morning or in intraday trading as it did a retracement, we can go back, take a look at a shorter term uh, chart if we get a chance to do that. That may have given you a signal just simply by it was continuing to make uh, lower highs and lower lows, signaling that what was going to happen was it was in this downtrend. Now, where's the next area? It's going to be this 0.786 area. And folks, if you hit the 0.786 area, I wish I could really see that. It looks like it's about 1.308. Just the screen is so far away in order to be able to keep this camera here in place. But it looks like it's 1.308. And if you hit that area, if you close down there right now today, you will have sliced through the 0.618 come into that 0.786 with a wide ranging bar and what that says is it's going to go ahead and it's going to hit the bottom the 1.29 area now you know there was a question that Kathy uh, from up in uh, the Boston area uh, asked me during as we closed out the uh, workshop and the workshop that we're doing tonight folks uh, in Tampa it is different than the workshop that Tom and I did uh, back in October so if you're wondering whether or not you should attend uh, this workshop is absolutely different than the workshop that we did back in October so it's worthwhile to attend now what Kathy asked me is do I still believe that the euro is on its way to complete its ABC which would be right up here in the uh, 136 uh, area that 136 area also happens to be a 0.618 retracement off of the highs going back to October 27th. And my, uh, my answer was, it depends what time frame you're looking at, but yes, that pattern is still in play, and it is still in play. And I said, what it looks like it's going to do here is it's going to do some consolidation. That consolidation, folks, now being the high of this 134-ish, all the way down to the 129 area until the lows, of the uh, February 16th area are broken, then that ABC up pattern still is in place. The retracement back up to that 0.618 area still would be in place. And in fact, if we just simply go ahead and remove some of the lines that are on here, just to show you that even from an expansion standpoint, it would be in place. If I just simply go ahead and take the expansion off of the highs that we had down to, let's say, the low, let's say it comes down all the way down to the bottom of that expansion area, what you're going to see is what we now would have up here is you'd have a 1.272 uh, A to B equals, uh, I'm sorry, you'd, uh, let, me, let me back up here, okay? So what you would also have out here is you'd have a 1.272 expansion off of the swing point. Now this here is where I'm using, I'm using a projection of the euro trading from the high that was put in on February 21st, 24th, all the way down to that low, that 129 area. So I'm using an expansion, and let's assume that the euro does trade down there, trades down there through Thursday, trades down in through that full moon, if you will. Well, then an expansion of that last set of swing points takes you right up to that 0.618 area. So as long as that area is not broken, you just simply have a consolidation, you know, going sideways, it'll go back up towards the top of its range in that 134, uh, and then that can go ahead and complete the A to B equals C to D, because now you'd have a, a 1.272 expansion and A, B equals C, D, and a 0.618 retracement off of the larger trend that's out there. So that's how you want to be able to put these numbers together, use these tools. This is like Christopher Columbus, you know, sailing through the waters. That's all you want to do. What other signals did the market give to us yesterday? You know, and if you were listening to Tom's show, he was able to point those out to you. If you didn't catch his show, you know, the first signal was really, as we were talking about, the first signal well, first, the first signal was coming from the small caps. That's why uh, both Tom and I were uh, short the small caps. We gave that trade out to the folks uh, that attended the workshop in Spokane, in San Francisco, and in Denver. We showed them the reasons why. We're going to show you the reasons why if you attend the uh, workshop today. That was where we first went uh, short in these uh, markets. So we were short uh, at or near the tops, if you will. And then and we talked about this yesterday, then you're looking for some confirmation. And the confirmation that we needed was really inside the uh, queues. Let's go over to the ETF. In fact, let's go over and take a look at the queues. And what we've been showing is the queues have been on this beautiful, absolutely beautiful, fantastic run to the upside, if you will. You know, have not broken down through this very, you know, well, I don't know if that's a 45, 55, 60 degree angle uh, to the uh, upside here. And... Uh, um, but you can see this black line that we've got coming through here. Yesterday, what happened was it's really the first time that it pierced through there. 
And I don't know, let's take a look. I don't think we set up a, a bearish in golf. And let's see, it closed on March 2nd at 6508. When it opened up yesterday, it opened up at 6483. So we didn't get that kind of a candle confirmation signal, but you did get a break of that trend. Now what you've done so far is you've gapped down. So where is it going to? Well, when you take a look at the Qs, because the Qs have been the strength inside the uh, inside the uh, uh, markets, if you will, the logical place, and first what it's got to break through, it's got to break through, the Qs have got to break through this high volume area on February the 15th. If you just simply take a look at the uh, candle strength, meaning the volume that's behind there, you're trading inside that candle right now. The high is at 63 86. You're trading at 63.56 right now. The low of it is 62.67. Just as you have to respect these gaps that we've had on the way up, you now need to start respecting any gaps on the way down. You trade and you close inside this candle, then where it wants to at least go to is the bottom of the candle. But where I really think it wants to go to, folks, is it wants to go to where it had its last gap up. Its last break, that is the February 3rd time frame. Uh, the high on that is 61.41. Again, you're trading at 63.57. But it's got, you know, this is right now where you're at, where if I'm your captain, and I am your captain, I'm turning on in the queues, I would be turning on the signal that says turbulence, if you will, because you're coming into that uh, area here of, uh, you know, with what we'll call a supply line, if you will. That is inside the uh, queues there, folks. Uh, if we take a look at, uh, let's just continue, let's go take a look at the at the DAX right now. I said the DAX was trading down 160 points or so. Let's see, it is trading up 170 points right now, 169 to be exact. So let's go ahead and take a look at the DAX. You can see you've got a pretty decent wide-ranging bar on the way down. You haven't seen one of these here. Uh, you know, actually, you haven't seen one of these going back to the uh, November 25th time frame. You know, if you take a look at this bar, you don't see many bars, if you will, on the DAX to the downside, meaning red bars, if you will. You, you have more green bars to the upside, albeit many of them light. The DAX is now trading into that February 16th area, and where the DAX is also going to be headed to is, uh, well, it's going to be headed certainly to February it's trading inside February. Yeah, it's trading inside February 3rd as well. So the DAX is probably going to give us a signal here. You know how we were looking at the Qs, taking a look at that February 3rd area. Well, the DAX is something you're going to want to pay attention to. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Dow's off 146. S and P's off 16. We'll be right back, folks. take a hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you seek to maximize your returns. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Would you like to discover the next great tech stock? David White, TFNN's technology guru, has just launched his new newsletter, The Technology Insider. In his newsletter, David will be looking for those shining stars that may turn into the next Apple, Microsoft, or Cisco. David combines his technology background as a software programmer with his market skills as a successful professional trader to give you this unique newsletter. We're on the verge of the next great tech run. With the Technology Insider, you'll be in front of the run-up and not lagging behind. David is developing a long-term investment portfolio. Therefore, we're only offering the Technology Insider as an annual subscription with a remarkable price of only $395. That's right. For a little over $1 a day, you'll receive the fundamental technology wisdom and technical trading skills of the technology insider David White. What are you waiting for? Go to the front of TFNN.com, click on the link on the front page, sign up for your two-week free trial, and become a technology insider today.
Put the power of the Chapman Wave methodology to work for you. No matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and very, very strongly support the use of his opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology, and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today. At Tiger Metal Exchange, we pay you more for converting your jewelry to cash. Let's go to uh, Brian in New Jersey. Hey, Brian, what's going on? Hey, Tom, I uh, just want to let you know I did uh, give you some jewelry. Uh, my jeweler offered me uh, about $650. But you get a check in the mail tomorrow for about 1200 At Tiger Metal Exchange, it's all about honesty when converting your jewelry to cash. Okay, let's go to Paul in Florida first. Hey, Paul, what's going on? Well, I want to commend you on the Tiger Metal Exchange. I just did a deal with you guys the other day. Oh, good. I'm very happy. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Now, yeah. did you sell us jewelry or did you buy coins off? Yeah, or I sold you jewelry. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. See, what we waited at was less than you guys said, so, you know, you're totally honest. At Tiger Metal Exchange, we give you the tools to value your gold, and it's absolutely free. Call 866-618-8888 or log on to TigerMetalExchange.com. We've created the easiest, safest, and most honest cash for gold process. Tiger Metal Exchange. It's the only call you need to make. Catch Tom O'Brien and Steve Rhodes as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. The Money Masters, next on TFNN. Mm, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, we'll look at them stars when we're together. Well, it's always better when we're together. Yeah, it's always better when we're together. It is always better when we're together, folks. Welcome back. 877-927-6648. Dow trading off 143 points right now. Google in the charge on the dollar amount on the way down. Google down 13 bucks. Apple right behind it down almost 13, $12.70. That's what I've got up on my screen here. Now, you know, I've had callers or folks ask me about Apple in the past, take a look at patterns. The only patterns that I've been able to see out there in order to play Apple uh, have been the candle formation patterns, whether they've been island reversal patterns or they've been uh, bearish or bullish engulfing patterns. But, you know, trying to find expansions on uh, something that is going to the moon has been very difficult to do. And let me get rid of those uh, patterns that are out there. You know, now you can use those because, you know, I've talked about that there's really no failures, only outcomes. And that's why you really want to understand expansions of swing points, contractions of swing points, uh, Gartley butterfly patterns. Tom's going to be teaching you about the tiger Gartley, the tiger butterfly this evening, is because what you can learn from, what, what masters do, folks, you know, the difference between a master, you know, and a dabbler or a stressor is that they learn from their mistakes, they learn from the market mistakes, uh, if you will, much faster and able to re react much quicker. You take a look at any professional, you watch them throw an interception if it's a football player, you know, do they get down on themselves or do they forget that play and then focus on what it is that they need to do? It's why you always want to be able to step up, take a look at a chart, you know, leave your thought process behind. What is the chart communicating to you? That's why I can give you, you know, a 10-step process, if you will, so that you can take, you can step up to a chart, any chart, doesn't matter what it is, doesn't matter whether it's a commodity, a currency, an ETF, a stock, it's not going to change. The signals that the charts are giving you are the signals, pure and it can be. So, you know, when you're taking a look at Apple, it's always best, in my opinion, to take a look at some of those candle formations. Yesterday, you did have a bearish engulfing candle. And if you knew this about Apple, you would also know that Apple has shrugged those candles off in the past. Uh, in the past, the last one that was put out there was the one from February 15th. That's where Apple is uh, trying to trade into. It's trying to get into the April 15th high, the high out there of 5.14.26. Uh, so far, you've only gotten down to 5.16.22, uh, but you did. You've got a little gap there. You see, yesterday, the low on the session was 5.26 even. 
So far, the high out there is at 524. So you need to respect the fact that you had a bearish engulfing yesterday. Right now, you still have a gap. If it leaves that gap open, you know, it says Apple is just simply going to try to at least uh, get down and test that supply line, the bottom of that February 15th area. That's going to be at the 496.89 level. You get down below that, folks, and then where are you going to? Well, that's pretty simple. Look at that gap that's open up there because gaps do eventually get filled. That would take gap. Gapple. Yeah, it would take Gapple as well, but it would take Apple all the way down to that gap at that 454 uh, level. Uh, that's the high there. The low on that is 443. Let's go take a, a quick peek at uh, Google out there. G O O G. They are leading on the way down dollar wise, if you will. And Google trading off uh, $12.67. I need to go ahead when I type that in, actually type in the right symbol. Then that will pull up for you on Tiger TV. And what is uh, Google doing? Well, here's the interesting thing on Google. You know, we watched Google uh, actually gap down when it came out with its earnings on February or January the 19th. I think is that January 19th? January 19th. Absolutely. And when that thing gapped down, folks, it did it with a vengeance. It did it with 10 million, 11 million shares, if you will. Trading session before that had gotten all the way up to 640 bucks. When you woke up the next morning, you were down in the 580 area, 590 area. You know, that hurts just a tad. What does it do? What does Google do? You can watch Google as it makes its way up to close the gap. What does it do? It's doing it with 2.2 million shares. Does it with 3 million shares. That, folks, is going against the uh, 6 million shares. The 6 million shares from when it gapped down. Not enough juice. Folks, thanks so much for being here. Tom and I will be up next. Then we got Kate Stalter, Victor Jones, and uh, Ken Shreve out on the West Coast doing the warm-up for the Tom O'Brien Show. Thanks so much for being here. Have a great morning.